King is off. I'm Dana Bash, and we begin with breaking news. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell made a big move in the GOP effort to pressure their Alabama Senate candidate, Roy Moore, to drop out of the race. McConnell said, I believe the women who accused Moore of sexual misconduct when they were teenagers decades ago. McConnell also said the Alabama Republican should quit the race, and he told reporters that write-in options are now being looked at. Roy Moore, meanwhile, shows no sign of stepping aside, and now he says he'll sue the Washington Post over an article it ran last week alleging the sexual misconduct. Four women, to be exact, told the paper that Moore pursued them decades ago when they were teenagers, including one who claims Roy Moore sexually abused her when she was 14 years old. Even before McConnell's comments today, several Republicans said Moore should drop out now. As for the White House, they said Moore should quit if the allegations are proven true. Moore, however, denies the accusations and is digging in for a fight. Washington Post published another attack on my character uh, reputation and desperate to stop my political campaign. These attacks I would involve a minor child, completely unfalse and untrue, and for which they will be sued. Rushing to Moore's defense, Breitbart News, run by former Trump advisor and big Moore booster Steve Bannon, it ran this headline last night, quoting the youngest accuser's mother, saying the Post worked to convince her daughter to speak out. Here with me now to share their reporting and their insights, CNN's Manu Raju, Yahoo's Olivier Knox, John McCormick of the Weekly Standard, and the Wall Street Journal's Laura Meckler. Now, uh, let's talk about this more news and put it in context, uh, the political context for our viewers. Um, Roy Moore is an outsider. He is somebody who made a pledge to topple Mitch McConnell, the man who said he believes the woman, women, before any of this happened. So it's not likely that Roy Moore is going to hear the Senate Majority Leader uh, tell him to drop out of the race. And he's going to go, OK, see you later. I'm out. Not going to happen. But it seems to me, and Manu, I'm going to start with you since you cover the, the Hill every day and know the majority leader well, that what he is trying to do is self-preservation for, for Republicans. Assuming that Moore doesn't drop out, he's sending the signal, he's not, Moore is not one of them, that the Republican Party will not tolerate these, this if true, and he is, you know, again, politically preserving the Republican Party, at least trying yeah, to. Yeah, and, try, and trying to find another candidate, presumably maybe convince Luther Strange, the candidate who, of course, more beat in the primary to mount a write-in campaign or someone else. But, of course, that could be politically yeah. perilous as well. He could divide the Republican vote and get a Democratic senator. Certainly, he wants to disassociate the Republican Party, the brand, mm -hmm. with more as much as possible, which is why he's doing that. But McConnell also is being careful in how he's pushing Roy Moore out of the race. This event this morning was a tax reform event. He was talking about tax reform. He was only asked the issue about Roy Moore, and then he offered this up. I believe the woman, the women he said after he was asked directly, mm -hmm. said he should step aside after he was asked directly. It's not like he was out screaming from a megaphone that Roy Moore should step aside because exactly what you just said. He does not want to become an issue in this race. Roy Moore ran a very effective primary campaign saying he wanted to get rid of Mitch McConnell. Uh, McConnell clearly is worried about the Republican brand and trying to do something, anything to save this seat. Uh, what you just said is really telling. Mitch McConnell was at a tax event. And what are we talking about? We're talking about him saying that he doesn't that he believes the women who are accusing Roy Moore and Roy Moore should step aside. That is case in point. Uh, at least one of the examples of why Republicans are pulling their hair out. Yeah, getting knocked off their agenda, getting knocked off their talking points by all these other yeah. events. This has got to be kind of an I told you so moment for Mitch McConnell, though, because remember he said in public just a couple weeks ago, he said the party has to stop nominating marginals. Has to, they have to nominate people who can win in a general election. Um, so he was already, and he was, it was clear that he was talking about, among others, Roy Moore. Mm -hmm. and, but to the extent, as you put it, um, that Roy Moore is basically a giant middle finger to Washington, D.C., including Mitch mm -hmm. McConnell. It's hard to imagine that what, what Mitch McConnell said today will, will have much of an impact unless he gets someone to run as a write-in. Mm -hmm. And then it's hard. I think it's difficult to see a, a path in which um, that doesn't divide with the Republican electorate and um, Doug Jones gets... And, and meanwhile, and meanwhile all, all weekend, White House officials were sort of going up to the line on saying Roy Moore should go out. Remember, the, the president 
formally endorsed his Republican primary opponent, Luther Strange. Uh, and the president wasn't very happy initially that the guy he endorsed lost. In any event, uh, what White House officials are doing is saying basically innocent until proven guilty. Thank you. If more evidence comes out that can prove that, that, that he can, he did this, then sure. By all, means, by all means, he should be disqualified. But that, that's a huge if. I also want to make sure that we as a nation are not always prosecuting people through the press. He has denied the allegations. I've read the stories. I've heard not the testimony and the evidence, but what people are saying publicly. I denounce that conduct. And if the allegations are true, he should step aside. I only know what I see on TV and what I read on the paper. But if the allegations prove to be true, he should step down. What's your take? You know, this whole idea that it has to be proven uh, really asks the question, what exactly is the standard of proof here? Uh, a lot of more suspenders are saying it has to be basically beyond a reasonable doubt. That is a criminal level of conviction. That's not even, uh, you know, that, that doesn't uh, persuade voters that they have to have that exact same uh, standard. You know, when you've got four women coming forward, all who don't know each other, all telling stories about how Roy Moore pursued them in their teens. Now, granted, three of these were not al allegations of criminality. The, the age of consent in Alabama is 16, but it is still wrong and extremely creepy. And Moore didn't, Moore didn't unequivocally deny that he had dated teens. When he was asked by Sean Hannity, did this happen? He said, not generally, no, it, it wasn't unequivocal. So I think that, that is why you saw people like Mike Lee, again, it, one of the most conservative people in the Senate withdraw his endorsement. Mike Lee is not the establishment. He's the farthest thing away from the establishment. So a lot of uh, genuine moral outrage, people who think that uh, these allegations are very credible and incredibly serious. Now, uh, uh, unless he drops out or the Republicans find a way to get him um, not off the ballot because it's too late if if, uh, if if he drops out, but find a way to overcome that with a write-in campaign or something along those lines. It will be up to Alabama voters. I want you to I want you to weigh in, but I want you to first listen to what some Alabama voters have told CNN. I don't think he's done that like that. You know why didn't they come up seven eight months ago when they was when he was running? All of a sudden, two weeks from now, all this stuff come up. You know, I believe it's a lot of BS. I really do. I'm a conservative. I'm a Republican. I vote Republican. This is a country based on justice and on a person's innocent until proven guilty. And that stuff needs to sort itself out. To be honest, I doubt that more supporters are going to leave his camp, regardless of what the allegations prove to be, whether proved to be true or not. Well, it's been interesting if what's happening in Alabama is in some ways it does reflect what's here, in some ways it's very different. I mean, there have been some recent polling in Alabama that show a tight race. So, and, and the Democratic challenger, Doug Jones, is a serious candidate, a prosecutor, somebody who's never held political office before, somebody who is, all else being equal, sort of a viable alternative. Now, obviously, Alabama is a very Republican state. The interesting thing to me is that while you have um, McConnell and others talking about mounting a writing campaign, the chairwoman of the Alabama Republican Party actually talked to the Alabama political reporter and basically threatened anybody who gets behind a writing campaign mm -hmm. to that they'll never be able to run in uh, run for office in Alabama again. So you have the, essentially the chairwoman of the party, she hasn't said much, but she did give that one interview, mm -hmm. essentially um, pushing back hard in a, in, in a, in a um, strong arm tactics against a right and really coming to going to bat for more. So there is obviously a big disconnect between Washington and Alabama. But, you know, I think it's, you know, this race is a month away and it's you know way too early to see how this all is all going to play out. And this is also a proxy war between McConnell and Bannon, yeah. of course, you know, McConnell uh, in some ways probably <laughs> is maybe pleased with the way this is happening because Roy Moore is exactly the kind of candidate that he says he's been warning against. Mm -hmm. And he says that you can't nominate people like this if you want to keep control of the Senate majority. And Bannon is going exactly after every single incumbent, McConnell himself, uh, and trying to get rid of McConnell as majority leader. So uh, the outcome of this could have re repercussions for this larger fight to maintain the Senate majority and in these primaries and some of these key races next year. Okay, we were just quoting from Senator McConnell because we didn't have the tape yet. We have it now, so let's play it for our viewers. Or do you believe these allegations to be true? I believe the women, yes. Okay, as, <laughs> as usual, he is straight to the point. He doesn't, well, he, he doesn't a lot of make, extra words. Uh, yeah, make a lot of uh, extra words and, and anything he has to say. Um, 
Olivia, do you think that this is just kind of the latest in the Republican Civil War? Or do you think that the allegations are so um, unbelievable that this could be a turning point? Well, I think this is this is different. This is not merely an argument over the role of the federal government in American life. This is a completely different thing. This is a this is allegations of uh, of serious misconduct by by Roy Moore. Uh, parenthetically, the statute of limitations has run out on these things, but Roy Moore may have actually made it possible for or might make it possible for us to have a real conversation about these allegations being proven. Because if he sues the Washington Post, he'll be in a situation in a legal setting in which these women would have probably, presumably a day in court. Um, so I don't think I, I don't think this is just another day in the Republican Civil War. This is a different creature. And even if he wins, uh, I don't think that's over because I think the Senate will be under immense pressure to yes. investigate these claims. I spoke to the former uh, chief counsel of the Senate Ethics Committee, and he said that uh, they couldn't take this up until he's sworn in. The Constitution gives uh, two thirds of uh, of either body of Congress the power to expel a member, not to necessarily exclude, uh, but they would investigate. And the and the standard uh, threshold for believing the accusations or not is a, a clear and convincing evidence. So it's not beyond reasonable and, doubt. It's more than a majority, but um, that's what they'd be looking and at. And one of the last times uh, a Republican senator was threatened with expulsion, the Ethics Committee was led by none other than Mitch McConnell. 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 That's right. And that's your history lesson. Today. Actually, we have another one coming up. But up next, what the Filipino government says the President Trump, uh, that President Trump did not talk about, rather, in his meeting with its leader in the Philippines, Rodrigo Duterte. Inside Politics, brought to you.